Being good at airsoft is a great goal to have, but what does it look like to have good sportsmanship on and off the field? Welcome to the Port City Podcast. Today we're talking about sportsmanship and respect between airsofters. What's up? You're here, and we are also here to talk about airsoft. More specifically, uh, what is sportsmanship? Sportsmanship and airsoft. Dude. Sportsmanship and airsoft. We uh, we mentioned it earlier. Um, something that we we wanted to talk about. We've been noticing some stuff in our local community um, that is a little concerning, but it's it is just part of the the game and whatnot but i think i would preface it this way okay i was thinking about this we talked about this yeah. everything we're about to say in this episode is not a oh we have it figured out you should get good you know like this is a we have noticed things that we do that are not contributing enough to a healthy community and that's something we're very very uh focused on right is yeah. is how can we improve airsoft right how can we do our part to make this thing better so that more people want to be a part of it and uh we had the conversation just about some of the issues we've been having in our local community and some of the things we want to do to help uh and i will say for for the issues we do have sometimes right on the field like it's nowhere near as bad is, as it is in other fields yeah this is still the best community outside of maybe like balahat just due to like the size of the field there um but as far as like the the how involved everyone is the consistent thing we hear from new members is wow i've never even people who have played airsoft say wow there's just something different about this community yeah. here where we're at and and uh so this isn't to like dog on anyone or anything this is no. just like hey like we see this stuff happening here's how we can do better and i would say as a whole our community does a great job of handling conflict and and handling issues on the field and and yeah. adding for that sportsmanship right so uh please hearing all this this is from a position of like these are things we are trying to we have talked through that we want to do so we're going to share it with you guys because yeah. maybe maybe this could help you in your community wherever you're at so i'll let you let's, let's take get it into away, it dude. so what when we say sportsmanship right what does that look like especially in the context of airsoft um so i would say firstly sportsmanship is is just playing the game in a way that follows the rules or honors the rules of the game itself so of airsoft and then also of your community right um airsoft is played a certain way there's a certain set of rules that is standard right call your hit you know meds and don't all that stuff fire. like don't blind fire yeah. you know don't like well, yeah anyway there's a lot of things about airsoft that are just inherent rules right but then there's also things inside of each individual community that are either rules or guidelines or something like that or just, you know, even the way that your community likes to talk about things or deal with certain issues and stuff that arise on the field, that's what sportsmanship, that's one of the aspects of sportsmanship, I would say, is is understanding those things and following them the best you can. Yeah. Um, you know, and then I think that that ties into a little bit of like a, a, a sense of respect between players, right? Because if you if you aren't able to respect your your fellow players then you're not going to want to do those things and that sure. is something that creates a lot of the issue is is this this sense of like well i'm me so i'm better or i don't have to yeah and kind of thing and yeah. that's kind of going back to what we said in the intro is like being good at airsoft wanting to be good and yeah. to be one of the best players out there is a good goal to have right yes. enhancing your skills and your play style and 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 working on your kit and your gear and <laughs> and and playing the objective and winning like those yeah. are all good things to want uh not at the expense of everyone else playing right right we are and, all uh, out here trying to have fun we're all trying to play airsoft and and i think that Again, like it, being a good player is not a bad thing. There is a point at which it becomes, you know, something that like is not accessible to other players. Right? There's no skill based matchmaking in exactly. Airsoft. It is everyone's out there playing and um, it should be your job, right? You should want to, as an Airsoft player, help less experienced players. Yeah. So if there's new players we talk about all the time teaching them right yeah. if they're doing something dumb or doing something just wrong like hey 
man, like here's a better way to do this thing. Here is a, you know, oh, like you're not allowed to do this, but like you should do it this way, you know, like yeah. that type of stuff. And so that is that is a part of making sure everyone out there is having fun and having a good yeah. time. And I I do there is a a thing people it, it it is a good a good thing to understand about just for everyone. You are not John Rambo, right? Like you're not Call of Duty guy. Yeah. You know, you're going to get shot, you're going to get hit. It's airsoft. There's BBs flying everywhere. It's going to happen. And accepting that, right, even if it's like, where did I get hit from? Like, there's no way. Or if it's like a, I just made this big push and and some dude on the other side of the field. Dude, what's even worse is I made this big push and I got friendly fired. Yeah. That is one of the most frustrating situations that we encounter on the field, especially if your field doesn't have like team markings and stuff, mm -hmm. which ours doesn't. We pick teams yeah. per game yeah. and there's no markings of teams. So you just have to know who's on your team. And a lot of the time it's, oh, well, that guy looks like he's looking my direction and he's behind enemy lines. So I'm going to shoot him. And that's a friendly who just made a massive push up to this door and is about to run in and take out all these people. Yes. And and you ruin that for them. And now they're mad. It's like, okay, well, yeah, I understand that. But there's also, you know, you have to understand the other things that go into that. There isn't team markings. You know, you are looking my direction, holding a blaster and all this stuff. So, but then also that person who gets hit of understanding, like, all of these things happen and I am still hit, and I do still have to walk back to respawn. It, it is and it that, is frustrating, but it's something that happens. And th that is more so a like, how do you handle it? Exactly. Right? Sportsmanship comes down to how are you going to control your actions? Right. And I'm I'm I am definitely guilty of getting upset on the field and frustrated. I don't feel like I've ever like you know yelled necessarily at someone or cussed someone out or had a problem with someone but I have definitely been upset. And, right. and so there's certain ways that you have to kind of handle these handle things, your yeah. own emotions it, in yeah. the moment and that type of stuff. But there are, there are, I would say there is a, a list of common yeah. complaints that and, we and receive, scenarios yeah. that you, you run into where these list of issues are things that will cause conflict oh, yeah. and being mm. a good sportsman is, is knowing how to handle it. The first one that comes to mind every single time is, is not calling hits. Yeah. Right? That's the easy one. Yeah. And whether that is for the person is cheating or they don't feel it, maybe that's people don't realize it is very easy to not feel a hit, especially if you're wearing gear. Ooh, one of my nose is running real bad, dude. Uh, you're getting you see that? Dude? Um, there, there is a certain level of like giving someone the opportunity or, or the, the benefit of the doubt. Okay, maybe they don't feel it. I'm gonna hit them a couple more times. Um, the other thing, too, man, is there are just some times where you didn't hit them. Yeah. Like there was there, even with us, like there was a time when we were recording that AUG gameplay for the review where I came around the corner <clears throat> with my uh, pistol and Corbin had the AUG and we shot at each other and I could have swore like the BB was going straight, you know, from my perspective, it seemed like, and he was like, I had nothing. I didn't feel anything. I don't know if it hit the, the blaster or went over my shoulder or what. And it's like, at a certain point, you just have to be like, okay, well, they're, they say they didn't get hit and trusting the people in your community. And that's part of a separate conversation, like procuring like certain rules and standards that make the members of your community trustworthy and, and people who are not trustworthy or yeah. are out to cheat and do wrong. And I was, I was intentionally cheating in that. I genuinely, I remember exactly what, what instance you're talking about. And I, genuinely did not feel it but at the same time that pistol you have had that experience yeah, with it, other players of like just, shooting at someone and them just not feeling it so it could have been that you did hit me and i did yeah, but it. i mean it could also just be that the shot went you know right over the shoulder could and be. and you know so just like don't assume every shot that you're firing is a, is a good even, one yeah. even if you see it even if you think you see it hit there are times where it doesn't and uh you, you for people who record gameplay it you know you can go back and look like okay you know here it's going and there are times where it even up to this like far off of the person is in a straight line but it like the movement of the player the curve of the bb may just slightly go to the side um 
so yeah, that that's a common complaint is, is not hitting. That's the number one. Thing. <clears throat> I, uh, the other one I hear is being like pushed into spawn. Like, uh, if, if the other team's just kind of dominating and yeah. they get really aggressive, you tend to get pushed a little bit too far back where you feel like you can't really get anywhere. Yeah. Um, and a lot of players get frustrated about that. And that's one that's like, yeah, I mean, we're trying to win. So I, I get that. I think there is a point where it's like, oh, for the full 10 to 15 minute game, we were just locked in our spawn. There wasn't anything like we had no options of like, yeah. you know, getting out and doing anything. Yeah, I, I've or even, even had if it. if it's like three games in a row. Yeah. You know, like then there's balancing issues. I, I've I've seen like just regular weekend gameplay where that's happening and half of the, the losing team just walks off the field. And yeah. It's like, yeah, I mean, there's nothing for us to do here. So I, yeah, I see that a lot. That's... You know that sucks. Um, I, the uh, something that goes along with that is like overshooting and that kind of stuff, yeah. like headshots. Um, I remember going to Battalion Airsoft in uh, Jacksonville, and there was a few games where that that Speedsoft team and just had us locked in our spawn, and like we couldn't push out, and we were telling the admin like we can't do we can't, anything we, not, not only are we like too far they're shooting at the spawn door like we cannot step yeah, like out as soon as as soon as i cross the threshold i'm being shot because bbs are just like even to the point where bbs were coming in and hitting us while we were just sitting in our spawn not even doing anything and we're telling the admin like hey like what are we supposed like we can't do anything and, and they were just like well you just got to figure it out yeah like, like, and that that to me is like okay well you've got like a bunch of new players and like young kids and stuff like yeah you had some players like us in there but against a you know a a much more organized and and formidable team like to just lock the like in a single corner yeah, yeah it was too much um you, there's there's with overshooting there's also shooting too hot <laughs> right so you have like your meds and stuff make sure that you're following the rules, man. If they say there's a certain FPS or joule limit, stay within that. Yeah. Uh, if they say, you know, oh, you can use this, don't shoot within a certain amount of feet, follow that. Yeah. I'm saying honor the rules set in place to make sure everyone's having fun. It's safe. Obviously, shooting a little bit too hot isn't necessarily like unsafe. Obviously, if you're shooting higher than, you know, goggles are rated for, yeah. Yeah, but if you're shooting like... Don't, you don't, there's no need yeah. to break the skin on every shot like that's and, just a little excessive and there are some people that we play with that every time i get shot by them i bleed it hurts yeah um and then the last one i think is kind of like a little bit more of a a, a soft issue yeah. like not something you can really measure and we did talk about it uh, for a second um with the uh like the, the balancing of balancing the teams of the teams stuff. yeah like skill gap right again it is a good thing to be a good airsoft player. Yeah. But part of being a good airsoft player is knowing when you are just dunking on a 12 year old. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, oh, yeah, dude, we're, we're crushing this team of children. Yeah. You know, or like brand new airsofters. It, like these dudes, this is their first time out here. You know? It makes them not want to come back. And then when you've got like comms and stuff yeah. that you're working with and like, you know, so I will say one of the biggest things people assume when they hear oh skill gap or balancing is oh we just need to rearrange the teams. Well, that is an option, right? If you feel like it is that bad, but there are things you can do before that. Yeah, that can help. If you want to have you and all your buddies play on a team, you, there can be a handicap, right? Okay, maybe you guys aren't as good, so you're going to take the harder side of the field, right? We know this side of the field is a little bit more difficult to push. We're gonna take that. We're gonna make the the or offensive push towards this this thing, or limiting yourself to like a certain portion. Like yeah, we won't push past. We won't this push point. past this point, or take too much ground, or like s pull some of those new players onto the more experienced yeah. team and teach them. Right, yeah. that's part of it. It's Let like, them work like with not you just and... run the thing, yeah, but like pull them in and say, "All right, like." we're making this push. I want you to do this. Stay on me. Like we're going to yeah. do this together and show them, Hey, you know, if you see them leaning way out say, Hey, like tuck your elbow in, you know, yeah. Peek just your head and, and, <laughs> and blast her out and, and giving them that, that input that's going to help them grow. So it is, it is truly one of those things where there are so many issues, uh, within 
airsoft that you can run into that would make people not have fun or, or cause conflict or, or even in some cases fights. Uh, but there are certain ways you can handle that, right? As an individual to be a good sportsman. Yeah. Um, I would say a good thing. So the sig- the Sigma grind set, as it were, right? <clears throat> it's a shifting of your mentality. You know, it, it's, it's being a respectful airsofter, right? How would you feel? If you were on the other side of this, right? If you were, if this was your first time playing airsoft and you were being, you know, treated this way, right? Locked into your spawn, over pushed, like overshot all the time, like all this stuff, you would feel pretty upset. You'd probably not come back. Is that what you would like for this person? Like, do you not want more airsofters at your field? This is the kind of things to think about. Like, what what is that person experiencing on their end that could be contributing to like their experience? If if it's something that someone is doing to you, you know, because that that's that's the other the other side of this is like, well, this person is overshooting me, so I'm going to get angry at them and sure. go and create this huge confrontation. Yeah. Okay. Well, what is that person experiencing for them to overshoot you? Say, like, okay. Well, there has been. I have heard a lot today that there's, you know, been some people not calling hits. So people are going to be, I have done it. There have been days that we've been out on the field and there's been a lot of people not calling hits or like needing a few extra hits to realize that they're being hit. And so by default, I just, okay, well, I'll just send three or four more, you know? Yeah. And, and I, I, uh, I, you know, lined up on someone who just had no idea that I was there and I had an angle on him and I shot him. I, I, you know, shot them the usual amount and then sent my extra three. And after that game, they were like, they're like, dude, you like lit me up the side. Like I, I was hit after the first three and then three more came. Yeah. And, and I was like, Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm hit. And I was like, you know, dude, I'm so sorry. Like you're absolutely right this has been a thing and so i have just been you know doing a little bit extra to compensate so i apologize you know i'll be more aware of that but so there's there's stuff like that that happens right what is but you know it was that explanation right like this is what i was experiencing this is why i did that i apologize it's not necessarily an excuse it's an explanation um so that understanding as well of like okay yes this is why i did this but it's not an excuse. It's not a justification for that action. Sometimes that is still like sometimes, yes, that person is, you know, taking a little bit extra time to call that hit. They do need a few extra BBs. But, you know, when when you are overshooting and someone does get upset, sometimes it's better to just even if you feel like you're right, just say, hey, you know what? I'm sorry. That's it's my bad. I won't do that. That's, that's I'm sorry. And it diffuses the situation. Then everybody's having a good day of airsoft. And I think the the thing can be sometimes where it's like, how do you diffuse the situation, yeah. right? And I think the go to is to understand it is a it is a simulated combat sport. So emotions are going to be high, right? You are competing. It is us versus them. When you yeah. are on that field, you are you are competing against the other team, and knowing that okay. I am trying to win. So when someone is doing something that's unfair, instantly that's frustrating. Mm -hmm. So knowing to, to, to accept the fact that you will get frustrated, but knowing how to respond appropriately. Because the thing you need to remember is you are enemies right, right now. But when you walk off of that field to the ready table, you're just a bunch of buddies playing airsoft yeah. together. And you're going to have to interface with these people. Yeah. and yeah, You're, you're going to have to be able to catch that emotion before it becomes a problem. Yeah. And and instead of exploding at someone, explaining, hey, like this thing is happening. It's not fair. Yeah. We need to address this. The number one thing I would say is handle it off the field. If you don't know yeah. how to handle it, default to tell the ref that it's happening. The ref will go handle it. Then when yeah. you get off of the field, have a calm reasonable conversation as two buddies playing yeah. airsoft hey man like you were doing this that's unfair whatever you need to do to change that yeah. right and sometimes it's even a matter of like i didn't know that this was a rule or this was a a thing that we could do like someone uh uh, uh a lot of people will run full auto full auto at our field is not necessarily it's, it's you know some game modes we do specify or some like c- scenarios we do specify semi-auto only like um 
if you're in a building as a defender in a game mode and you're shooting out of a window in a building, you can only shoot semi-auto out of that window. Um, but if you're outside and it's, you know, 20 feet distance and you're, you're just shooting at somebody, full auto is cool. Some people don't know that. A lot of fields are semi, semi-auto semi only. So when new people come in and they get full autoed, we've experienced it a few times where, you know, they're like, dude, like, why are you full autoing? Like, you can't do that. And then, you know, they get heated. But then it's the explanation of, no, no, no we haven't. We, it's in the rule set that you can run full auto. Here are the rules as to how that works. Yeah. And then after that, that person's fine. It's like, okay, well, I will run full auto if that's the thing. And that, you know, sometimes that is the case, right? Of just not knowing a rule and and once that explanation comes, you're able to move past that and have a good day of airsoft. And it's it's not even something that like like I said at the beginning, we are having this conversation with each other first because yeah. we're trying to figure out how to address it. Cause I realized looking through the AUG gameplay. Like there was a moment I remember on that day where someone was full autoing through a crack in a wall. Yeah. And we were attacking, they were defending. And that, I, on top of some other stuff that had happened that day, I was very frustrated. And even though I didn't like freak out and, you know, like cuss the person, person out, whatever, and, like, start I still reacted a little bit more like angry than I think I re- like realized in that moment. Um, but I still just like, I was upset, but I knew. Going and arguing with this person isn't going to fix it. So I, I tell the ref, hey, like, what are we doing here? The guy's full autoing. The ref went over and handled it. And it was it was easy. The guy came up to me afterwards and was like, hey, man, like, I'm new here. I didn't realize that this wasn't, like, a thing I could do. And I was like, you're cool. Like, it was it was fine. I was like, it's all good, man. Like, I was frustrated. But that's why I told the ref to go over there because I, I knew, like, yeah. I, I knew I was upset and I knew that if I went over there, there was a chance that I got more upset. Yeah. So, uh, but we had a reasonable conversation about it and I was like, no, nah, like, sorry for getting upset. I didn't mean to like blow up, but, um, it is, it is just easier to let the established admin handle it and then have a conversation, right? Not an argument, but a conversation. Uh, and I can, I'll give a, uh, like a, a f- kind of a flipped version of, of that, uh, that example, um, this past weekend, we had a situation where two people were having a, an exchange, like a, a firefight and uh, or a BB fight, and uh, one of the guys saw the other one kind of pushing, and instead of staying in the angle and, and trying to shoot him as he was like providing covering fire, this guy drops back into cover and starts pre-firing an angle, just starts shooting straight ahead of him. He's looking down the barrel, so he's not blind firing. He's just, you know, spraying BBs and the the other person runs into the stream of BBs and gets hit and gets upset saying that he was blind firing and there was a whole altercation and that player ended up leaving. They just packed their gear and they left. Um, and that's, you know, something to think about. That's one less air softer that we get to play with that day. Yeah. And that's you not know? something that we want. No. And, and we the last thing that we want is people getting upset to the point where they stop playing the game. Yeah. Like that that's that's just not fun for anyone you know why why do you want less air softers there you know that's it's just weird so we we all want to feel cool and look cool be cool in this smell game. cool feel cool i think you already said that look look cool feel cool smell cool be cool be cool uh think cool yeah think cool thoughts um, especially this summer we all want that right like that's the whole point is to feel like we're in call of duty but not sometimes you're can not be the main dude. Character. yeah and and i think it's important that you know it, it's a, it's a thing of everyone gets their moment right everyone gets their their opportunity to make that big play to to you know uh to you know get the big push or or you know get the three piece or whatever that I think the important thing to s- distinguish here is you don't have to let them do that. No. Right? But when they do it, don't rob them of it. Right. Don't don't get upset, right? Like the the amount of times that, you know, I'm I'm, you know, operating, I'm doing my thing and then someone like throws a grenade over the top and like swings the door real quick and, you know, I I'm already hit from the grenade, but I still get shot like two or three times because they don't know who all called the grenade when they come into the room 
like I could get mad and be like, I'm already hit, dog. Like, oh, yeah. oh, oh. Or I could just say, yeah, okay, you know, they they were just shooting because they didn't know who was in, and I and, and yeah, I could say hit, but you know, when until they're in the room and they see the hand up and hear me say hit, and you know, sometimes it is a thing where I'm sitting there with my hand up and they don't shoot me, but like again, it's a combat scenario, tensions are high. When they swing that room, they may not be necessarily able to see oh whose hand is up whose hand is not who's got a gun pointed at me who doesn't yeah so it's just it's all things to to think about everybody gets their moment i mean i've even had i've even had times where like i did hit the person like they make the push and i did hit them but like they probably hit me too so i call a trade you know and that's that's a i would feel like a compromise right like for that person like yes they went into the room, they got a few kills, they didn't necessarily clear the objective, but they still made a good play, they feel good about that, and I called the hit, you know, even though they also got hit. Yeah, the 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 takeaway here yeah. is control how you react to stuff. Yeah. Only you can decide how you will react to what's happening. Dude, that's stoicism right there. And the more, yeah, the more respect you have for other players, and the more grace you have for other players is going to add to a day of fun for yeah. everyone. And if everyone does that, there's no problems. Yeah. And then you know, but the thing is, is you have to, you have to start with it, right? Yeah. You can't, you can't, you can't say, well, I'm just doing it because they. No, you have to do the right thing first and yeah. set that expectation, right? Set that standard as a player. Hey, this is how we should act. And that is the part of growing your community towards the point. And I think that's really what we have right now is it really is, like we said earlier, at the end of the day, you're going back to that ready table and everyone is just buddies playing mm-hmm. Airsoft. And that is the, the that is the mindset we have here, yeah. right? And I think that's what contributes to our community handling these issues so well is that all of the guys out there, all the regulars, right, who are out there want that. Yeah, right. they are contributing to that. When there's an issue, they talk about it. They may be upset. It may be uncomfortable for a minute of like, dude, you're doing this thing, whatever. But we come to the conclusion of like, hey, we're all out here to have fun. So why would we let it ruin our day? Right. And and I think it's uh, right. Like um, there's a sense of like on the field, everyone's wearing a mask. And sometimes I do feel like it's easy to like see the mask and not know like or not understand so that the point of the mask is the person behind that is probably your friend you know someone that you've been playing airsoft with for years and you're now cussing this dude out yeah and then you have to leave the field go to the ready table take your masks off and look each other in the eyes after having said all this stuff right and and i i, I think it's it's a game and losing friends over a pretend game is ridiculous yeah right definitely even even if it is a knockdown drag out fight like like that that that's crazy right like it 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 doesn't have to be that way right there's nothing in the game of airsoft that has to be that way um it's, it's just not that serious yeah well I mean, we hope that all of this stuff is helpful. Yeah. It is stuff that we practice, or at least try to, right? We do our best. We're not perfect. Uh, but we hope that this helps you. We hope that it helps your community. Let us know in the comments if there are things that you guys are dealing with in your community, and we'd be happy to help in any way we can. Uh, We're like, uh, what's the uh, bullies, bully hunters? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, all, all of this, all of what we do here at Port City Airsoft is in an effort to help the community, help grow the Airsoft community mm-hmm. first locally right we're focused locally but then also globally and if you're watching this from not where we're at you're part of that yeah and and you can do your part to help contribute to that so and we love you equally um i think above all of that though the most important thing is to go play airsoft should do it all right these are going a little long but i don't i actually don't think we stopped the timer when we no yeah that's okay Art. Come on, you're selling the shot.